say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So why are you bragging on the bills? You got the bills on the guy. Yeah. All right. Verse 3. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came on him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? Question number one. Yeah. The temple will drop. Right? Then he said, And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? A lot of people missed it. Those are two questions. When shall these things be when this temple comes down, which happened in 78 AD when the Roman sacrifice? And we had to flee about it. Alright? And then when you're going to return. So it's a whole time frame from the fall of Jerusalem to the return of Christ. That's what they were asking. So about this. And they say, What shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive. First sign he gave you, watch out for the deception. Watch out, the man will be coming to see you, bro. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Mm. What's some of these new, new jacks in that? Let's go around and out with that. Then it be called, or when it's the moment of death, deceive and many. We've had Jim Jones, David Koresh, we got uh, Al Sharpton and Louis Farrakhan. All of these are what we're talking about that deceive many of the children of Israel with Tom Foolish. Now, here Farrakhan talking about the coming race war in this nation and talking about the only reason it ain't happening now because he ain't said so. What? <laughs> you ain't said so. No, if you had power like that, your head would already been exploded. Off your shoulders. He ain't got no power like that. But this is what we're talking about. It's the deception of many by false leaders, y'all. And the Messiah keep telling us, be not deceived. So it's on us to study these words and to look for the sign because Satan ain't gonna make you do nothing. He's gonna dangle it out there. And if you go for it, because within yourself, well, it just it just feel right. Okay? Everything good may not be good for you. Right. Everything bad is bad for you. So if they make evil sound good, don't go for it. Do not be deceived. Christ said, this is how we want to know. Plain and simple. Ain't no running here or there trying to get the answer from some wise man up in a cave somewhere. He said, near, right up to me. Right in the face. Right. Go ahead. And hold on, hold on. Can you name those well known uh, uh, charges? Yeah, charges. The majority of the cash flow doctrine that use a hustle program like the prosperity doctrine. Anytime you hear anything other than the gospel of Christ as it is real, right. given by the Father, out of the Holy Bible, free to give, then free don't believe it. Right. It's plain and simple. Two can't walk together unless they agree. If you are agreeing with another doctrine and trying to mix these two, y'all are lying. There ain't no way, no way to the Father but through the Son. If you belittle him, to a prophet or a sinner, you have no life in you. None. Because the first thing is to believe. And they got you believing in the man. That's why you always hear my pastor say, exactly. my grandma say, this exactly. is what thus said the law. Right, right, right. All those names, names, and I mean, Yeah, over there in the moment of death is right now. Yahweh bin Yahweh. Yahweh bin Yahweh did, or his, his government name was Tulai Mitchell. Tulai Mitchell Chumbi. Chumbi. <laughs> yeah, it's two of them. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> it's one that the, that the, uh, of the nation of Islam got to promote that is the Christ. Anybody saying that they are a savior in the sense of delivering you from disaster? from pain, from sickness, that put themselves between man and the Father is an antichrist. I want you to understand That's right. that put themselves between man and the Father. Now, David in Psalm 
110 says, The Lord said to my Lord, If David is the king, who is that middle man? Uh, who is it? Who supersedes a king in Israel? The Lord. The great king. The Lord. Yeah, 
called the Battle Falls and Lazarus, which is the capital of Syria. And they don't have a brand new seat right now, and they don't destroy them. I'm going to take Syria now as we speak. So this was prophesied 2,600 years ago. The Spirit of the Most High was the prophet Jeremiah. And you see it's happening in our time. All right, so I'm taking it again, Matthew 24, 9. Uh, verse 6 talks about the signs of Christ's coming. First thing Christ says is don't be deceived. Many don't come. Claiming they the anointed, claiming they the intercessor. He said, well, be not deceived. So that means all of us need to be studying to show ourselves approved. Especially in this late hour, we need to be closer and closer to the return of Christ. Try to get you studying and then praying to the Lord and give you understanding. And sincerity is true, not to be a period of movie guru, but to bring his own mind or something. So we need to understand the scriptures and be in a secret place of the Lord. That's right. All right, this is verse 6, Matthew 24 and 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Hear it not. See that ye be not troubled. The Lord said, don't even be afraid. For all these things must come to pass. Y'all hear what it says? Say that again now. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. Christ fulfilled the law, it says, and the prophets. That's right. So, they need to be explained that have everything mentioned in the Old Testament concerning the second coming been already fulfilled. If it has, then the law is done away with, then there should be no sin in the That's world. right. Because we just start off with Psalms 5. No iniquity or wickedness is well with him. Under no circumstance, Satan was was told you can't dwell here no more, wasn't it? Right. Get out of here. What was Adam and told? Get out of here with that stain on it. So y'all, we have to clearly understand. Christ is coming back to clean house. Mm. Go ahead, brother. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Y'all hear that? See, now think about this. All of what he just read, World War III on the brink, and it's just the beginning of it. Mm. You got to really sink into your mind and what that means. Because when them pistols start raining over there, they don't think that's the end. It will be the end of the mass. But it won't be the end of what Christ has prophesied, saying it's going to happen to this earth. That's just the start. Mm. It's going to hit worldwide. You think all these movies about America going down is just okay. somebody sitting in some Saying, why would I do that? If I got troops out there fighting, right. 
feel me? So again, you know, but we, we can focus on that all day, but what's the end game? What's the end game? That's what it comes down to. You got some other? Level. But move from now, we have wicked men out there. 
There's a Bible list that you can read. Most of them are our kids, like Jacob, who burns the Bible, or Israel, that the script called wicked men that were his seed would not continue on this earth. Like that. Ever again from look at anything right. So now to be an imitator of God, Satan has to have his man like Christ is a deliverer. He got his own man set up, transferred like the power of the Holy Spirit from God through Christ does everything. Satan is going to transfer all of his evil powers to his son. And that son has to be in mirror image of everything that Christ is saying he going to do. Bringing a new temple in. Bringing a new kingdom in that all have to live here to. But the only difference with him is he said, I don't care what doctrine you believe as long as you bow to me. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Not in Christ's kingdom. It's all or nothing. All right. All or nothing. So y'all, that abomination of desolation was a pact. This one that's coming gonna be the real deal because Second Thessalonians chapter two tells this one is the main thing for wickedness. It says he's gonna cut us all. He's gonna do some things. He's gonna make lightning come down, but not by his power, by these halogen tricks, HD type of tricks that he's gonna make these things done. But he cannot deal with the Holy Spirit, just like Moses up against them warlocks in Egypt. Those sleight of hand deals they were doing, Moses was dominating the right. They don't say he does not have that power. Never had it, never will. He's only given, he has to ask permission for whatever he does from the most high. That's right. So we went on some permission to be with you. Yes, sir. Right. Whoever this may be, because it said he and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire. Now, we need to have proof that he wrote the stone in the lake of fire. Also, with a false prophet that prophesied before him on the levels like that, that were the mark was worldwide. And not put, after that, we're seeing that Christ say, I would show up immediately behind him doing this. Mm -hmm. And I would destroy him sitting on the, on the throne and my kingdom if he takes over. So we either got a promise to be in the kingdom now. Mm -hmm. Or that was the son of perdition. Right. Not the son of perdition. You got evil spirits and you got evil men. But you have the son of perdition. Judas was called the son of perdition. But you got the son of God. Right. The son of God. Absolutely. Because he's a copycat. It's got to look just like the real deal. It's like the bootleg person. You know if you went to a trunk on a shell service station lot and you got one of them uh, uh, Bill's poor person or whoever it is. Bill's poor. <laughs> False thoughts and believe it was somebody else. And then say, I'm sorry. It's going to be clear, right to the point. You ain't going to have no problem understanding who the Antichrist is. The problem is going to be, is can you withstand what he's bringing to the table? That's what the problem is going to be because it's free people. You ain't able to. Ain't you hungry? Look at the baby over there. That same thing. Hey, you can fix all of that. So, so what Chapter 1, uh, verse, verse 53 and 54, mm -hmm. it makes reference to the abomination and desolation. Yes, sir. Is that a difference? Yes, yeah, yeah, they were in the Greek occupation. Right. The Christ, the Christ was living, the Greeks had already passed in the Romans. That's right. He's speaking of the future abomination and desolation. All right. So when we was reading, when we read about the Matthew, we preached to the world power of God, not the Romans. Right. Next the Persians, next the Greeks. And it was an abomination of desolation set up in Jerusalem under that time of the spirit. So when Christ had happened in 24, they had about the signs of his coming. Right, right. At the end of the world, when Christ was living, who was running the world? Rome. The Romans. Right. Meaning that the 
abomination you feel is not to be that all the past. Right. But you're so you're looking for one after Christ. Right. Right. And it's some condition. That's what I'm asking. What I'm saying is what I'm asking is, is, is the, the kings are set up like Nebuchadnezzar, uh, um, we know Cyrus. Right. Five on top. Right. And one is. Right. One, 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 one,